I'll start with an opening statement from Coach and then go to questions. Yeah, um, you know, first of all, uh, we I lost a, a friend this past week in, in the mayor of Durahim. And uh, at 43 years old, young guy, got a wife and three kids. And, uh, you know, the team, you know, had to take the court or was getting ready to take the court in the next day or so. And, I mean, it's just, it's a tough time. And, in the, you know, in this coaching circle, man, they're, they're not, a, not a lot of guys who have no enemies, and he had none. And, man, just poured into his guys, loved people. His thing, um, he always said, love wins. You know, love wins. And, uh, and I, was, I just, uh, it, it was hard on, hard on our staff. Um, you know, and uh, so uh, just with that, it it's just allows you to be so thankful for life, health, and strength, you know, to be able to do this thing that we love with people we love and a place we love. And, um, you know, we, we'd love to play perfect basketball and win every game, man. But at the end of the day, man, this thing is about relationships, right, and uh, loving people and yeah, just, just helping people to be the best version of themselves. So I just would like um, Amir's family to know that we are praying for them and we are here for them. We will support them in any way that we can. So thank you. Start with the positives. What were what do you think the bright spots were in tonight's performance? Um, you know, when we got to the paint, uh, we were effective. You know, 1.45 OER. Um, uh, we just didn't do it enough, you know, 29 possessions with a paint touch, 17 without. Um, you know, I thought there were spurts there where we were active defensively and we was able to get out in transition and move the ball. A in practice, well, we've been, uh, I think, 73% 73, 73 of our made shots were assisted in practice, in 30 practices, however many we've had. And, uh, you know, today in the first half, um, I thought we just dribbled too much, you know, and uh, felt like we could beat each guy one-on-one -on -one instead of playing together. And, and that's when we're best, when we're assisting each other and getting buckets and moving the basketball. And so, um, but, you know, uh, it's going to be a work in progress. 13 threes, did you have a problem with any of them? No. Um, I, I, you know, like I say, I say this all the time, like coaches want guys to shoot 40% from three, but they can't live with the six misses, right? And so he was two for nine in the first half, but he was two for five in the second half. I think he's a two for five shooter. I think he did a better job of taking, uh, being more on balance. Like he hit his first two and then he didn't fight for his feet anymore. He just felt it was going to be his night and it was going to go in. And, and, you know, so what he has to do is make sure that he focuses and concentrates and uses the right mechanics and, you know, fights for his feet so he's on balance. And when he does that, he's a 40 plus percent uh, three point shooter. We didn't get to see Max tonight. What's what's he dealing with? Yeah, uh, he had a little uh, a toe injury. Um, it's not anything serious, but it wasn't worth it uh, to to risk it would be better to let him, like, rest. And uh, he's a good player. You're going to like watching him. Uh, you just break down what you liked about Coleman tonight as well? Well, man, he's a, uh, you know, uh, he just does everything. Swiss Army knife, right? Like, um, you know, I think it was, like, seven rebounds, six assists to go with, you know, 13 points and, you know, um, two steals and, you know, six to one assist to turnover. Um, you know, just so there does, he, he does a lot of things to make the game easy for the people. And, uh, you know, I just, it's just about us learning how to play with each other together. You know, that, that's going to continue to help us. But, but he, was, he, was, he was a bright spot. There was a couple other bright spots. I thought Buddy, you know, was good. And uh, Buddy got more minutes because Max didn't play. And, and um, you know, Buddy showed that maybe we got to find more minutes for him. So, um, you know, we, we've, got, we've got talent. It's going to take a while to figure everything out. I know you were big on the versatility throughout the offseason, and you guys experimented with a few different lineups today. Uh, did you sort of feel like that versatility showed itself with the way that you guys were able to play with some three-guard lineups along with some lineups with multiple bigs? 
Yeah, I, I you know, I, not having Max out there today kind of messed up the rotation of like what we wanted to do, and so um, it, it forced us to do some things that like maybe we wouldn't have done or we hadn't done yet, like in the, in the build up to where we want to get to, um, but. I think every dude on the roster, if you put them on the floor, they, they'll provide something positive, and so everyone just has to be ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Doug started the game off the bench. Uh, what was the thought process behind that, and how do you think he played today? Um, you know, just coach's decision on that one. Um, you know, Doug's a talent, and uh, he's learning how to be a point guard and how to lead and that there's so much more to being a point guard than just dribbling and, you know, passing, but like running a team and um, he's embracing that. And uh, uh, I think he still, um, he still allows the ball going in the hole to affect him on the other end and in the other things. And so um, we just got to help him to continue to grow, but he's, 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 he's a talent, and not, you know, I, I, he's going to be a major part of us being successful this year. On that same note, I guess, C.J. Jones started in his place. What, I guess, did you see from him and, and in leading the offense? And, and yeah, playing it's not, it's not starting in his place. Right? C.J. started. He's been our best point guard. He's, uh, he has an incredible assist-to-turnover ratio in practice and again you saw it today he gets guys shots he can defend the ball and keep it out of the paint uh, you know he, he can rebound his at six five his length provides a lot uh, for you and and he's a willing pass like he just gives it up you know just like ball comes out of his hands easy makes he's making the right play so um, they can play together he can play by himself you know I mean and uh, so yeah C C CJ's earned where he's at he's it's not like in place of. Coach, what kind of strides have you seen Buddy make since a year ago? Conditioning, his conditioning, and then his attention to detail. You know, it, it helping, and so um, was obviously conditioning has to continue to get better because he cramped up a little bit in the second half, and so. Um, but that those are the two biggest areas. <clears throat> Is a. Uh... Moby, a redshirt candidate for you guys? I would not think about redshirting anybody right now. Um, Moby's father was ill, and he had to go home uh, for five days. Um, <coughs> and uh, it, was, it was serious. And so he went home for five days. So he missed a ton of practice and stuff. So everybody's competing to play right now. Is, is there any word on it? Is he okay? Have you heard anything? Is, that, is that, that is hanging in there right now. We good? Hey, thank you guys. Uh, he's. Uh, On the topic of Amir, uh, how much, I guess, did he mean to you? And, and do you have a favorite moment or memory with him? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, so during COVID, right, I'd known of Amir. He was an assistant at Texas A&M. He's an assistant at different places. And, um, and so, you know, we recruited against each other, but like I'd see him on the road. I didn't really know him, know him like that. Um, him and Yurik worked together at Texas A&M. They're like, it's like one of his best friends, right? So Yurik would always tell me what a great guy he was. And then um, during COVID, we started this thing called Be Ready. And we met with young coaches on Zoom. And it was supposed to be one night a week for 45 minutes. The first night we met, you know, and Zoom was like free for 45 minutes or whatever. Uh, we got bumped off like four times, right? So we was on there for almost four hours. And then it went to two nights a week. And for like six to eight months of COVID, like it was crazy. We was on there two, at least two nights a week uh, for four hours, bringing on guest speakers, coaches, talking about what was going on. And, you know, Amir was... The, the coach at, head coach at Kennesaw State, so he, and he was on there, and he was just pouring in the guys, and we had older coaches mentoring younger coaches, and, you know, we did mock interviews, and we did all kind of things, man, and uh, he was just, he gave so much of his time, and as a head coach during COVID, trying to figure out how he can practice with his team, how, you know, everybody's trying to get an edge during that time, and, and he was just giving and giving and giving, man, and, uh, just so so wise beyond his years and 
uh, so caring, man. And I, I I learned so much from him during that time uh, while I was an assistant at Baylor doing during that COVID time. And uh, so thankful to Alvin Brooks the third and and Yurik and and Amir for all they poured into me and to the, a bunch of other young coaches during that time. So appreciate you asking that. We good. Go Cats.